the police swooped with overwhelming numbers and overpowering amounts of armed strength. And they were taking no chances. Their focus was number 47, Rue de Lanoy, in the Brussels neighborhood of Molenbeek. Their target, Salah Abdel Slam, the so called eighth attacker. Wearing masks, heavily armed, and with dog units in support, it was a massive show of force. I saw the police rushing in. They put the barriers in place. I was wondering what was going on. Then they pushed everyone away. They asked us not to go outside. This is the face of the most wanted man in Europe right now, and police believe he is hiding in the Molenbeek district. Officers barked orders through loudspeakers, telling the occupants of the house at number 47 to open the windows and surrender. Specialist units took up positions on rooftops overlooking the target address. Explosive charges were also used to clear the premises. But it was a false lead. News spread that the suspect had not been found. Four hours after launching the raid, the police units began to withdraw, leaving behind a sense of shock and bewilderment among Molenbeek's locals. Le mot choqué, il est même trop faible. The word shock is too soft. I'm talking to you with a sense that we have one foot in reality and the other in a sense we are lost. In the next 48 hours, when we maybe start to understand what is happening here, then I think we will say, wow, we are certainly in shock. We all are. Another declined to give his name. It's always like this in Molenbeek. The relations between police and the residents has always been very difficult. For the past 20 years it's been like that. It's not new. It's true that what's happening now is making things worse. We didn't need the attacks in Paris to find out we had jihadis in Molenbeek. We already knew that. Molenbeek is notorious as a fertile ground for radicalized Muslim youth and hundreds of ISIL fighters have been recruited in this Brussels neighborhood. The dangers have been well publicized but the complaint is that too little has been done to effectively tackle the problem. They're able to recruit these young people here because of the fragile economic, social and cultural situation that people here live in. But those who recruit them aren't just from Molenbeek. It has to be an international situation because you can't buy Kalashnikovs in the local shop here. There is a sense here in Molenbeek that despite occasional raids and high-profile policy statements from the government, the authorities have never got to grips with the radicalizing elements within Belgium. Paris has changed all that. But will the police response drive a further wedge between the residents and the authorities, or will it bring new cooperation? Paul Brennan, Al Jazeera, Molenbeek, Brussels.